Good evening, family. Hopefully this finds you all doing well and excited about the message that God has in store for us today. This week's scripture focus comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 through 45. If you've missed the other teachings from the scripture, you may want to visit our website, eastsidebcpc.org. There you can gain access not to just the the videos that relate to this particular teaching, but to all the other teachings that we've had so far. Each week, I get super excited waiting for the big reveal. You see, Randall starts his own personal study, and from that study, he then provides those of us that are leading Fast 15s with our topic for the week. So, here we go. My topic is written law versus oral law. Isn't that great? I hope you get excited about God's Word. It's a beautiful message of love written by the Creator, God Himself. He saw fit to write you a book. Pretty awesome, right? You know how good it feels to get personal letters, notes, messages? In our church, we have an amazing group of ladies that are so sweet and faithful to send out cards, to, to, to let others know that they're thinking about them, to encourage, to uplift, to, to pray for one another. We have Miss Patty Rents, Miss Mary Singletary, Miss Cheryl Nelson, Miss Carol Graham, Miss Joanne Lindell, Miss Laverne Baston, Miss Kathy Duncan, and others that are just so good and faithful. And you know when you get that personal message, how good it makes you feel? and thrills your heart and puts smiles on your faces. Well, the thing is, we have an, a personalized message that has been delivered to each of us, but it's not just any message. It's an actual book, and this book was written by God, and He's given it so that we might know Him, that in knowing Him, we can grow to love Him, and in loving Him, we can love others and serve Him. So don't miss out on what God has. Let's dig into His Word and see just how much He cares. Father, we thank you for your word, and I'm just in awe of how you've provided it to us, Father, so that we might know how to live. God, you've given us everything that is necessary, and yet we often neglect it. Lord, we, we tend to lay it aside. So I just pray for your church, Lord, that we will become excited about this personalized message that is intended for each of us, any who will take you uh, by your word and, and begin to experience your word at work in our lives. So help us, Lord, to, uh, to be able to receive what it is you have for us. Help us to make your word uh, the center of our lives, God, so that you can teach, Lord, so that you can correct, that you can change us, Lord, that we might be transformed more into the image of Christ, Lord. Uh, Lord, people desperately need to see you. So may we not just be hearers of the word, the doers also. All right, so we're looking here, and as we look in the book of Mark, uh, chapter 1, we're going to begin in verse 21, and here we find Jesus teaching in the synagogue, and the scripture says that as Jesus was teaching, that the people were amazed by his teaching because he taught with real authority, quite unlike the teachers of religious law. Now, <laughs> That's disturbing, right? What's so different about Jesus' teaching? Well, let's see. Suddenly, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, Why are you interfering with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Interfere? How could Jesus' teaching possibly interfere with the people at the synagogue? Well, he continues. He asked Jesus, Have you come to destroy us? Destroy? Seriously? What could be destructive about the teaching of the Word of God? Now, I don't want you to miss this next line because the man continues by saying, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. See, what's the problem here? The problem is that the Holy One of God, His teaching, the Word of God, reveals the enemy. False teachings cannot hide under the scrutiny of the Word of God. God's Word destroys the enemy's ploys. How many of us need that in our lives? How many of us are desperate for victory 
and and yet God has given it to us through his word but the problem is like these people in the synagogue we've grown so comfortable with what man has to say that we, we're not even aware of what God has to say we need the word of God we need it, it, it's not acceptable to remain ignorant especially in a day such as today where we have instant access uh, in any form to the Word of God, whether written or audible, a digital, uh, you know, we, we have access. So why are we content being ignorant? You know, the old saying, ignorance is bliss. Well, let me tell you, when it comes to the things of God, ignorance is death. We can't afford, church, to remain ignorant of the Word of God. God has given us His Word so that we may know Him. And knowing Him, as I said in the beginning, leads to loving Him. You cannot tell me you know God, and yet you don't love God. If you know God, you love God because you understand just how much He loves you and everything that He's done on your behalf and on the behalf of all others, everyone you love. Isn't it good to know that we have a God that, that, that doesn't just love those whom we deem lovely, but He loves all? What a blessing. What an amazing God we serve. And the more we know Him, the more we love Him, the more we serve Him, the more we obey Him. See, God wants us to know His Word. Don't rely solely on that which is spoken. See, the written law is good and necessary for life. The oral law is taking people at their word rather than God at His Word. Foolish, right? Sounds crazy, but how many of us do that? How many of us are guilty of solely depending on what others have to say about the Word of God? We get lost in, 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 in the craziness and the confusion, the mistranslation, when we rely solely on man. We need, if you're a child of God, you've been given the Spirit of God, which has now empowered you to be able to read the Word of God. So read it for yourself. Know what God has to say. Listen to what Jesus said to the religious leaders in Matthew chapter 23. Jesus says, What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites! You crush people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything you do is for show. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, faith. You clean the outside, but you are filthy on the inside. You look like religious people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Hmm. Holy relying on man for your walk with God is dangerous, and it can take you to places that you never intended to go. Don't misunderstand me. There are good, godly teachers. We're blessed, we, even within our church, to have amazing men and women of God that teach the Word of God. But listen to me, church. God doesn't want a third-party relationship. God is intimate. He's personal. And He wants a relationship with you directly. And you, and you have that relationship. You enjoy that relationship through your time spent in His Word and in prayer. You. Don't, don't just depend on what the preacher has to say. Don't just depend on the preacher's prayers. Those are good and they're beneficial. Thank you, Lord. They're a gift. The Word teaches that. But, but we need individually. That's the beautiful thing about Jesus. He made a way that we can go directly to the Father. Through the power of the Spirit, we, we are enabled to, to look to His Word and to, and to go before Him in prayer. In Psalm 119.11, the psalmist says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. See, he drew directly from the Word of God in order to do the will of God. Smart man, right? We should do the same. In Psalm 37.31, we read that the godly have made God's law their own so that they never slip from his path. What does that tell me? In order to be godly, you have to make God's word your own. How am I gonna do that? Only by being in it. But when I do that, when I make God's word my own, what does it do? It keeps me on his path. Remember, I just keep envisioning Randall's demonstration as he pictures Jesus across the way and, and he demonstrates that straight path God has given us to Jesus. And, and that's the reality. It's that if we know the word, then we can abide in the word uh, on the path. We can remain faithful and consistent and we can strive toward the things of Christ. And, and so 
There's a supernatural power that comes from the written word of God when it's consumed by the people of God. In John chapter 4, we see the disciples concerned for Jesus about him needing to eat physical food. And what does Jesus respond? How does he reply to these disciples? He says, I have food that you know nothing about. You know, for us, we're like, wait, wait a minute, but you've missed a meal. See, what was food for Jesus? Jesus relied on the word of God to do the will of God, and that sustained him. It was sufficient. And here's what I can't help but believe. If it was sufficient for him, it's sufficient for us. We just don't know its sufficiency because we're not relying on it. We're not consuming it. We're not taking enough of the word in order to sustain us. So, so again, we look at this situation like the disciples, and we're like, uh, man, you need, you need to hold up. <laughs> you need to eat. And, and I, I think how sad, you know, we, our lives are so governed by what we're just accustomed to, right? Um, and, and so we, we miss the power of God at work in us and through us because we're not putting it in. We're not consuming it. So I want to challenge you, church. Don't rely solely on the regurgitation of the Word of God. It's diluted. It's, it's sometimes tainted. And, and if, at best, it's going to lead to malnutrition. Be a Christian who relies on the written word of God. And when we know the written, we can partake of the oral law, right? We can, we can hear the oral law, but the oral law is not going to throw us off track because we know the written law. So know God's word. Believe God's word. And in doing so, God will bless you. He'll bless you. You'll experience his power like you've never known it before. Understand that this, this is a living vessel. Partake of it and enjoy what God will do in and through you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, I just thank you for your word. I'm so excited, God, about how you have purpose to give us all that is necessary in order to live. We're not bound by the oral law, God. Lord, you've given us your written law, and, it, and it's freeing. Your law frees us from all those obstacles that come through the oral law, God. And so help us to not be confused. Help us to dig in and, and, and enjoy the beauty of your message that is to us. It's personalized. It, it's specific to each individual if only we would partake. So, God, I just pray, Lord, that, that as Jesus taught, uh, that we would be people who would hunger and thirst for righteousness because when we hunger and thirst for righteousness we hunger and thirst for your word they go hand in hand so god help us lord to be a people that can't get enough that we become fat spiritually lord because we're always partaking in and, and god we know that when we do just that you're going to be glorified so we thank you in advance for for the truths that we know lord help us god to implement these practices in jesus name amen well i am so excited about being with you buddy and i love our time together i hope you again will will not just enjoy this message but go back hear the messages that have led up to here know what god has for us church he's building us up into a mighty army don't miss your opportunity to learn and to grow good night